One thing I've heard producers talk about is planting green uh, wherever they've had uh, winter cereal like uh, cereal rye or triticale or winter wheat. Uh, they really like that. I, uh, it seems that every everyone that I talked to said we're going to do that again because uh, they like that so much. In fact, I was just talking to a colleague just a couple hours ago. Uh, he recalled a conversation with another producer and who had called him and said, you got to come see this. You just got to come ride in the tractor. This is heaven. And this was last year, uh, planting, planting soybeans into green cover. Well, one thing for sure, I think everybody's just trying to make sure you have your equipment as ready uh, as it can be and be ready to plant in some less than ideal environments probably and uh, I think well like anybody that has a cover crop that's overgrowing in the winter is probably going to want to let that grow right up to planting time for sure you know especially if you're planting soybeans into a, into a rye or uh, winter wheat just just to try to maybe use up some of this excess moisture. One of the nicest ways of planting beans that I like is actually into a cover crop of rye either flown on or drilled on it can be four, five, six foot tall. That mat will enable us to actually carry over wet ground better. And what we see is the water that does run off, runs off clear. We don't have that muddy stream. And that mat will hold weeds and moisture the rest of the summer. When I first started putting cover crops into like wheat stubble and it was always, uh, you can't dry the ground out. You can't dry the ground out because you're going to need that moisture in the spring. But if you think about it, even in a normal year like where we're at, after you combine that wheat until, and then you plant corn in there or soybeans next spring before they really start using any moisture, if your soil, even if the profile was empty, probably holds seven, eight inches. Well, if you start looking at historical rainfall in our area, you're probably at least four inches over what that soil can hold. I've yet to have my beans suffer yield loss from using too much moisture with the rye. We compare it to our neighbors or other fields we don't and the yields have been nearly identical, um, even including 2012. Um, we ran four or five bushels actually higher where we had the rye, but that year management, try and when to kill it. So in 2012, we killed that rye, it was less than 15 inches tall. Um, some years we kill it at thigh high in May. You gotta watch where your seed bed moisture is. You can dry that seed bed out too much. Um, but if the moisture is there, we let it grow. It can be an issue with the planter. You gotta move your residue managers up, closing wheels. If you've got any type of spike or anything on, they can wrap. Um, we had that happen a couple times, so if it gets too tall, we end up using the drill instead of the planter. And like this spring, we've got the planter and the drill we're going through now. We'll put all new blades on the drill so that we're ready, so that we can slice through that. Dull blades, too much hair pinning. And the other thing we find is um, timing of killing it. Uh, we either want to plant into it dead brown or green. If it's in that yellow stage, it's too raggy. It just doesn't cut. You don't get the seed in the ground properly. 